Honestly, man, I gotta ask. Do you even want to make the playoffs? No. What? No, I'm not trying to make the playoffs. Okay, I was gonna do, like, this whole bit, but you seem pretty serious. Oh, do I? What what gave it away? Is it the 52 days straight without winning back-to-back games? 52? Or is it my league worst power play percentage, which pairs nicely with my 31st ranked shooting percentage? Wait, don't you have like a top five penalty kill? Isn't that like all effort? Yeah, it turns out it's pretty easy to accidentally block shots in this league. Huh. Well, I don't get it. Why don't you want to be in the postseason? I need a high draft pick, man. I don't want to be stuck in this mushy middle for the next 15 years like the frickin' wild. I haven't been on the channel in months, and I'm still catching strays. Unbelievable. Sorry. Alright, man. Well, it's simple. Just fall out of a playoff spot. I'm trying, but nothing's working. It's pretty tough when the other teams also don't want to make the playoffs. Do you not want to make the playoffs? Oh, no, I do. I'm just... really bad. Huh. Low quality fans of a high quality Bruins team. That is a dub against the team in the East. The team to beat in the East. By far in my book. And look, you could say, hey, bro, what about the Panthers? I think the Canes are better. You could say, hey, man, you're sleeping on the Rangers. I am. I am deep in slumber. I don't give a crap, which means the Rangers are likely to go 16-1 and one through the playoffs because I said that. The Canes are just that team, man. And I know we've talked a few years in a row now about the Canes being that team. But mm, this team looks real good. This team looks real good. And they were discombobulated tonight. They had four days rest after a brutal schedule before that. They were mixing up some lines. They healthy scratched Yesperi Kotkaniemi, which is hilarious in a lot of ways. But that team, I think, is the team to be in the East. And this was a good effort. This is a weird one because we jump out to an early lead and then we hold on. And the refs get really involved in the second. I don't I don't think the refs did a terrible job with that. I don't think they were like egregious calls or anything. I thought they were trying to let them play and they got to a point where like, ah, I gotta call that. I gotta call that one too. So certainly I'm not blaming the refs for the second period. I think that was more on the Bruins. But the Bruins injected life back into the Canes in the middle of this game. And then had to survive. And they did. And sure. You would like an effort that showed a little more of a team beating another team through 60 minutes and not really holding on to a hot start. But I still think this is a really good, strong win. And even if you took away that beginning of the game, you have what I think is one of the best teams in the East, if not the best team in the East, going against your team, and they are right there together. They're bashing lines. They are competing. That's a close game. No matter which way you want to slice it, even if you take away the beginning of that game, that's a close game with some stellar goaltending on both sides. I think I think that series would be brutal. I think whoever came out of that series would be limping. But a hell of a game and a hell of an effort by the Bruins. I just, I'm pretty pumped about this one. The Canes have the best penalty kill in the league. They have the third best power play, the eighth best offense, and the third best defense. Also, since the deadline acquisition of Gensel and to a much lesser degree Kuznetsov, they are 10 2 and 1 with the fifth best offense, the best defense, the Top a top five penalty kill and a top five power play. This team is complete, man. The top six is dominant. The Aho line might be the best line in the East right now. Yeah, the East. Still an excellent thing to say about them. The bottom six is solid. Their third line, the stall line, you can put up against any top line and expect to at least break even. 
And they're that good at shutting down other teams' best lines. Their six defensemen, however they want to roll them out, are strong puck movers. They're good at snuffing out chances. They didn't have a great start to this one, I know. But that's a good team. And with Freddie Anderson coming back from a potentially career-ending ailment and putting up Vesna numbers, that's scary. Everything about this Canes team is scary, dude. And yet, or do that. And yet, the Bruins, one thing I will say all day about this, they showed zero fear. And I think that's something that the Bruins have done all year really well, is although we've had periods of the year where they go into a shell when they get a lead, or they, they're not closing games out the way you want to, I believe that the Bruins have it in their head that they are one of the best teams in the league on any given night. And record-wise and point-wise standing points, you could be like, yeah, that's one of the best teams, absolutely. But for those of us who've watched all year, you can definitely look at this Bruins team and go, yeah, you money-balled it, you put it together, patched it with some glue, some duct tape, and the team's performing well. They're performing well. But it's always been this season, it's this season, it's always been really hard to look at this team as a cup contender. But this team carries itself as a cup contender. And that's, I mean, that's a good thing. That's how you want your team to carry itself. This is the second game against the Carolina Hurricanes. They beat us in January 3-2. to two. The lineups are going to be as such. We have Marshan Coil Geeky. Hate that. I hate that so much. Heinen Zaka Pasta. Good. Yes, keep that. DeBrusque Boquist Frederick. I put might be fun. That line got absolutely mollywopped. That line got eradicated the entire game. They were smoked. Like, oh, bad. Really bad. JBR Beecher, Lauco, barely noticed him, honestly. Linto, Mack, Watherspoon, Carlo, Grizz, Peak, and Swayman. All eyes on Swayman. Because it's been six games in a row, I believe, of just bad play. Not good enough. And that's okay. You go through highs and lows. We're not in the playoffs yet. You get to have this low during a portion of the regular season where we all get to go, whatever, get back to your game, bro. We're good. We're good. And he was good. Oh, he was so good. And Brizzo, we have news, is week to week. He went back to Boston. Didn't travel with the team on this one. Maroon should be ready soon. I don't know if that's really an upgrade. I don't think it is. And the bottom six misses Brazil badly. They do. They do. That's just is what it is. Like, comment, subscribe. Nailed it. Puck drops. Puck drops! This game begins, and I'm terrified. I'm terrified. I hate losing to the Canes. I got Canes buddies who are messaging me. But we're going to start off in the most terrifying way. By getting an early lead. 2-12 in. It's poor coverage by the Kings. As Coyle moves the puck out of our zone, gets it up to Geeky, who's at the uh, right point of our zone, and he sees that Marshan's behind the defense. Chuck the puck to him. It's a perfect pass. Good job by Geeky. Marshan gets the breakaway. Save made as he makes a move to his backhand. Freddy gets there. But Marshan is tripped while attempting that and ends up sliding into the puck, and the puck gets past Anderson. And it's a good bounce for us. We'll take that 1-0, and that's 400 goals for Brad Marchand on the career. An incredible achievement. Good for him, and he can finally just get the monkey off his back. That's done, and get back to a little more normalcy. Good start, eh? And then 456 in. Another Marshan chance that he can't quite corral and it gets snuffed out by Freddy. It's our third, only five minutes in, it's our third odd man rush slash breakaway of the game. And then one minute later, Ben don't break defensively. We have to make a couple saves. We get in front of a couple shots. And it leads to another odd man breakout, though. A 2v1 for Geeky, who he opts to shoot, which was the right choice. Goes high glove. Freddie makes a save. The only reason I'm pointing these out is because that's the fourth odd man rush or breakaway. And we are less than six minutes in. That's not Kane's hockey. And I think, and I want to point this out because this continued all game, and the Canes adapted. They made sure that they weren't really allowing these odd man rushes as much. But it meant two things. One, 
that the Bruins are doing an excellent job clearing the puck out of their zone quickly and succinctly. They would get behind our net, grab the puck, and move it. Yes, Swayman still had to make some saves during this time period. I'm not saying they had the Canes had zero offense, but they were prepared for a heavy Canes forecheck, and that forecheck just didn't show up early in this one. They attempted to, but the Bruins were excellent at moving the puck out. The second part of that equation is once the Canes had to adapt to these fast breaks, they have to lean back a little more, particularly defensively, which means it opens up more space in the neutral zone to carry. All of it is a big chess match. You need one thing to go your way actually leads to another thing going your way and another thing and another thing. If you can break down one part of their structure, it means they have to adapt to another version of it, which leaves something else open. It's just the way any sport works, and I loved watching it all happen through that first period. 7.42 into the period. I have no idea what the Canes are doing at this point. We, we get into the offensive zone, and we push the puck over to Pasta, who's on the left wall. And with some nifty handling, he gets away from his defenseman. And his defenseman circles back up into that left circle. And Pasta's basically on the goal line. And he goes, I'll take a couple strides towards the net and see if anything opens up. So he does that. And no one collapses. So he takes a couple more strides. And as no one collapses, and Freddy has to move off the short side post by just an inch so that he can get a better angle on Pasta... Pasta roofs it, blocker side, short side. It's a gorgeous goal. It's 2-0. What the fuck are the Canes doing? What are they doing? You are leaving really the only great offensive threat on the team alone in your zone on the goal line with the puck. It's just not a great plan for you guys. I don't get it. 9.14 left. Bruins get set up once again. It's Pasta carrying the puck up the left wall, kind of circling to the top of the slot. And he's going to try to shoot it as he circles around, but he flubs it, and the puck just skitters away from him. Well, Heinen's going to be there. He's going to jump on it immediately and bump it towards his right, which allows Pasta to recover and skate right into it. That actually, that flub of a shot pulled the defenseman forward because they thought a turnover was coming. Meaning they're all a little too high at this point, meaning there's space in the slot as everyone has to restructure themselves. Pasta's going down the right side of the slot, uses that space to get the puck over to Heinen on the left side. He's going to collect and go absolute sniper Rooney and cheese top blocker. And it's 3-0 just like that. Heinen, Pasta, Zaka is a line that is humming right now. No reason to split those boys up. 7.46 left, a perfect play by Svetch as he wraps the puck around and backhands this across the crease to Stahl, who has a wide open net, who shoots it into the back of Swayman. This was not the Canes' night. It just wasn't. That should have been a goal 10 times out of 10. Tough break for them, but we'll take it. We're going to move on. 5.50 left. Drury and Beecher are going to drop him. Drury is just trying to spark his team, and Beecher is just trying to stay in the lineup. I get it. They throw bones. Jury gets the win, but I'm proud of Beecher here. And with 108 left, another Canes breakdown leads to a geeky 1v1 with Freddy. Stahl jumps into the play to pretty clearly save a goal here uh, as Freddy is on his belly. But that was your fifth, as far as I took notes for, your fifth odd man rush or 1v1. Oh, no, sixth. It was your sixth. Yeah, the Canes defense in the first was really bad. It was really bad. We've already talked way too much just in the first period. Second period starts. This is going to be the parade to the box period. Because 4.03 in, the first call of the game, Ajo's going to go for tripping. The power play is terrible. It's so bad. But we're going to get another chance. Because 7.54 in, Svetch is going to go for high sticking. We have a four-minute power play. And I know... If you've watched all year, maybe you're just tuning in now as we ramp up to the playoff. That's fine. That's fine. All sorts of fans, all different all different types of fans. That's fine. But for those of you who have watched all year, you kind of went, oh, no. <laughs> a four-minute power play with a three-goal lead? You have a chance to really ice this game. So you knew the power play was awful. 
It was a total squandered opportunity. They managed two shots. One of them wasn't even a threat to score during four minutes of power play time. And all of a sudden, the Canes are alive. And they are alive. They kill that off. 6.19 left. Carlo's going to go for slashing. We're going to go to the penalty kill. Ten seconds later, Lindholm puts his stick through the back of Jarvis. You can talk about embellishment all you want. That distance from the boards, using your stick at this angle down into the back, I mean, that's the right call. That's They called him for cross-checking. They could have called him for boarding. You can say he went down easy. Lindholm knows better. You are a professional. You should not be putting your stick in that position. That's that's just not a great play. It's just not a great play. I, I, do I think it was embellished? Yeah, absolutely. Doesn't matter. That's a You put yourself in that position. We have a 5v3 penalty kill for a buck 50. And 30 seconds left of the 5v3. It's a shot from the top of the slot. It bounces over the net during that. Peak is fighting in front of the net. He knocks a Canes player into Swayman. Swayman gets knocked down and does his best to draw me like one of your French girl poses. And doesn't move. This was the only blip of Swayman's game, right? Gensel is able to recover it on the goal line, flings it at the net. It bounces on top of Swayman. Zaka tries to get it off of Swayman, and I think he ends up just knocking it into our own net. Whatever. 3-1. Power play goal for them. We still have 40 seconds left or 30-something seconds left to kill of the actual other penalty of Lindholm's penalty, which we kill. But I have no idea why Swayman stayed down other than, because this is a long time, I think he was trying to milk it for goaltender interference. I think that's what was happening. We would never have won that challenge. So I'm glad we didn't challenge it. That's a goal for them. Move on. And we're going to go to the third period with a two-goal lead. I'm really start. I hate this. I'm really starting to gain confidence in this team. It's, I'm, I, I'm, I want to be optimistic. I'm excited about being optimistic. I think last year really kind of late in the season, that, that hurt me a little bit. It hurt my optimism. But watching this Bruins team all year, it was really hard this past month to believe in the third period and think that this team can close out games with a lead. And now I'm starting to get to that side of like, no, I'm really starting to believe in them now because they're doing it over and over again. And they did it again. But that actually ramps up my nervousness as well because I'm like, oh God, I actually believe in them. What if they don't do it? I'm just going to be heartbroken. 122 in to the period after a huge save by Swayman, which was a game changer, right? In close, uh, he closes a five hole. If that goes in early, a scramble in front of the net, less than a minute and a half into the period in a two goal game, and now all of a sudden they're only down by one, this gets real dicey. But he makes that save, and then as the play moves to the neutral zone, Heinen's going to get tripped by Martinuk. We're going to go on the power play. It is atrocious, and this team is so obsessed with passing and passing and passing, and then doing a blind, no-look, behind-the-back pass to no one. I don't get it. We're going to talk about the power play in a second. We don't do anything with it. And then 2.11 left. It's just solid hockey throughout this period of of shot suppression, of trying to make the right play. It was a little cautious. I'm pretty okay with the way they finish this one, though. Lindholm gets his third of the season from 180 feet. It's a 4-1 final empty net goal. And the Bruins, the Bruins crushed the 6-on-5. They crushed any hope the Canes had late. They did a great job. They did a great job. And the game notes, the first one is the Bruins continue to close games, which is huge. Second game, no. Obvious one. Heinen, Zaka, Pasta. I'm pretty sure they're outscoring opponents like 14-4 to 4 through the past few games that they've played together. Keep them together. Just keep them together. I want to give Swayman a ton of credit. That's a game, no. I mean, he won that game. That He really did steal that game, I believe. Uh, he was fantastic. He was just fantastic. I want to give Monty a lot of credit. Having this team not only ready, but ready to handle a pretty ferocious forecheck and having them moving the puck well. I want to give Andrew Peak a bunch of credit. I thought Peak was excellent in this one. But my game note that actually has some conversation to it, the power play has an issue. And the issue is that they overpass, that they're very predictable. But if I asked you what play 
is their first power play unit trying to make, what would your answer be? Right? What is their their bread and butter play? I don't know if you have one. I don't know if you have one confidently. Because this is the way I see it. They'll move the puck around a bunch. And then they'll launch from the point and hope for like a reactionary goal. Okay, fine. That's I mean, that's power play, whatever. They'll get the puck to Pasta on the left side. His one timer is no longer open. They don't he doesn't really set up for it anymore, honestly. Um sorry, that's not true. He sets up over there, but usually like wants to fake it at this point. No one's really capable of giving him a perfect tape to tape anyway, but they're they're covering that pretty well. But he'll set up over there. And if a pasta slap shot isn't available, he'll do the whole, like, collect the puck and then scoot into the slot and try a hard wrister from there. And that's it. And those plays have not been effective. They haven't been consistently scoring in the second half of the year. What is the play that the Bruins are trying to make in the power play? I was watching the Panthers the other day, and I've watched this all year because Reinhardt's on my fantasy team. Kachuk and Reinhardt were on my fantasy team. They love on the power play to get the puck to Kachuk with speed, who's standing to the left of the goal, and he's going to go up to the bumper. Classic triangle, right circle, down to the goal line, up to the bumper, and Reinhardt buries it from there. It's simple. You know it's coming. It's incredibly difficult to stop if the puck movement is good. The Bruins don't have that play. That's the play that the, the Panthers try to set up. That's what they want to set up on their first power play unit. The Bruins don't have that play. They want a transition goal, or they fling the puck up around the umbrella and then chuck it at the net. It's just not a set play. It doesn't have to... You don't get that set play every single power play. But it is one you're aiming to get a couple times a game, hoping to bury one because it has a 30% success rate or whatever, which would be massive. That's, that's what you're supposed to be aiming for, is a play that you feel confident will end up in the back of the net. Can you get it set up properly? Can you disguise it well enough where teams aren't sniffing it out? And the Bruins, in my opinion, opinion don't have that play at all. They just don't. And whether it's personnel or, or whether it's coaching or whatever, I just don't see them have purpose on the power play. It just seems like they're moving the puck around until they open up a lane to the net and no matter how far away or how little traffic there is or just the low percentile chance they just chuck it i don't like it i don't like the way our power play is playing and i don't think that's a hot take by any means all that being said this is a great win this should feel good we got panthers and then canes again so at this point i'm feeling confident in the process of the team the results don't have to be amazing over the next week but obviously, you'd like to see them keep winning. But keep those same processes. Keep these games tight. Have that four check. And defensively, keep clearing out the net the way they've been. Peak was all over that this game. I thought he did an excellent job of making sure Swayman could see these shots. Really good job by him. Uh, Watherspoon was doing well with that too. So just, just players to compliment. And defensively, I, I think we're getting better and better. Hopefully that continues. Go bees. Go bees! And once again, it's time to give shout outs to those who are keeping the lights on for this channel. We got a shout out our top line tier to start. Let's start with Erica Pulley, Colin Nolan, The Bugman, Brock Nope, Han Slomo, Coach D, The Atomic Lizard, Bradley Johnson, Aaron Adams, just Aaron, Darren Woodbury, Brett Arney, Pinsent, and Nick Zatrulo. You guys and gals are absolute studs. But we can't mention the studs without mentioning the Stallions, our all-star tier high-quality inspectors, John Kirk, Jacob Pratt, Heil E. Coyote, Adam Ella, Bruin Smash, Joel, Abraxion, De Kingery, The Only Newts, A Tasty Snack, Dutes42, 
and Jeremy. I can't say thank you enough. I appreciate all the support. Your absolute legends, stallions, whatever great adjective we can work in here. Thank you, everyone, from the depths of my heart. And go bees!